Have okay, a great so meeting, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Daryl. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to General Council of October the 10th. I'm going to first begin by media on the line. I'm not seeing any representatives from any of the uh, local media uh, that will lead us into the adoption of the agenda of October the 10th. Are there any additions to new items? I have one, Audrey. Okay, thank you for that, Audrey. So I have one new business item, uh, Melba. Okay, we have Melba that has a new business item in relation to the elections and as, and as well as mines along the same lines of the new items of appointing uh, the new CEPO. Are there any further additional items? Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing none. It's been moved by Audrey. Is there a seconder to adopt the agenda with the two additional business items? Seconded by Melba. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. We do have a number of delegations with us this evening. Our first uh, delegation joins us online. Uh, this is in relation to a satellite pharmacy proposal. Uh, I do apologize if I'm, if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Manelli Shah, I believe, is joining us online. Uh, he will walk us through uh, his uh, proposal, or rather presentation. Uh, and at this uh, point in time, uh, we will look to uh, a recommendation to accept as information at this time. So if, with that being said, I see he's connecting to audio. So Mr. Shaw, I will pass the floor over to yourself to walk us through uh, your presentation once you are fully connected. Sorry, just bear with us as we're uh, fixing his audio. Mr. Shaw, can you just give us a thumbs up if you could hear us in the chambers? Yeah, I see it's still his audio. Sorry to those online, just bear with us a, a couple seconds here. Yeah. I see Sherry Lynn can hear us as well. Is there anything on your end that we can do to help? Um, can, you, can, you, can you get the um, can you chat to do it on the panel? Mm -hmm. Just to chat to change we log back in. Be able to do it from there. Okay, we are having some technical uh, difficulties on Mr. Shah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Hi, good evening, Mr. Shah. Can you hear us? Okay, I see you're still on mute. Hi there, how are you? Okay, hey, we're doing good, thank you. Uh, so again, uh, good evening and welcome to our general council uh, this evening of October the 10th. Uh, we do have you on our delegation portion, uh, which will see you walk us through your presentation. The recommendation on the agenda at this time uh, is to accept as information. So at this point, we will just have the uh, you will have the opportunity to walk us through your presentation. So I'll pass the floor over to yourself and good evening and welcome. No, I really appreciate for the time um, given today uh, for a brief demonstration like what we could do for the community and how we could help in terms of health and well-being so i'm not sure if i could um i have shared my screen and i'm not sure if you could see a bit of attachment about avalon pharmacy so <clears throat> oh sorry mr shah yeah i just wanted to confirm we can see your presentation online okay thank you so much i appreciate that so the, the proposal was to have a satellite pharmacy. Now, before going towards satellite pharmacy, we want to let you know that we have uh, Avalon Pharmacy, which we located in Caledonia, and we are specialized in compounding, so compounding medications. So suppose if a, a person, um, um, any patient who cannot take a medication by mouth, 
we formulate the medication in such a way like a liquid form, which they can take it in a liquid form. Uh, certain medications which they cannot take in by mouth or liquid at all, then we formulate the medication in such a way that they can just have to apply on the skin and the medication gets absorbed. So that's our one of our specialty. Um, another specialty is a blister pack. So we have a lot of patients which we serve the community as well that if they do not remember to take the medications on a timely manner, we formulate the blister pack in such a way that from Monday morning, noon, evening, and supper time, all the medications are filled in such a way that, that they prompts that they can take their medications on a regular basis. Another thing is we are expertise in any addiction medication, such as methadone and um, there's even another medication called buprenorphine. So anything related to overdose, uh, lifestyle habits, changes in the, um, the medications, any of the mental health, we deal with each and every um, medication with the patient on a personal level, and that helps. Our proposal technically, if, you, if I could go on my second thing is, What I really wanted to talk is about um, about our satellite pharmacy. So the proposal of a satellite pharmacy is a small pharmacy within White Pines. Now we've been we've been in White Pines building. We spoke to a, a lot of different healthcare professionals over there, and what we have noticed that many times patients are coming in, but they're not getting their medications on a timely manner or even on a Sunday, there's no pharmacy open. So what we wanted to do is propose a 300 square feet uh, space, maybe at the Six Nations White Pines building. And with that, what, we, what, would, what would happen that we could, we could be only open at a certain amount of time during the healthcare professional needs. And we would be able to do any urgent medication needs like Suppose if a, a person comes with a smaller antibiotic, we could provide the antibiotic. We collaboratively work with the Six Nations, flu shot clinics, COVID shot clinics, COVID testing, diabetic blood pressures. Uh, and the most important thing is we rent that specific space from you as a 300 square feet space, and we operate a small pharmacy over there. The larger pharmacy we already have, but this will help in the community Health, making sure, like, suppose we do the soup days. We've even been to the food bank on every Thursdays. So we have our stall there as well. And we, and we help the people who need any help regarding to the naloxone kits or any other things which we could provide. Now we do have a stall opening up uh, on, um, I think so, if I'm not wrong at the date, I think so we're having on the 24th or the 26th. I think so we have... Um, a Thanksgiving dinner for the seniors at the Six Nation community. And we have reached out over there and we're gonna open up a stall. What we're hearing constantly from your community that they need help in the, in the community. And we are we located a bit on the edge of the community. And that's what the proposal was, if we could have a 300 square feet space in the community area, if you would like to, or even in the White Pines building, we would be able to collaborate with the patients and the healthcare professionals on a timely manner. Now they have diabetic experts, they do clinics as well, but they don't have a pharmacy which could be have everything given at the same time. So we could um, cater the patient needs at the same time. So if the patient comes in and they need diabetic education, as a pharmacist will provide the diabetic education. If they need the shot of a flu shot or COVID shot or COVID testing, we could do that. If they needed to have a blood test done, like a small prickle needle for to understand their blood sugar, would we, we would be able to do that as well at the same time. So all the, all the customer catering we could be doing, and that would be a really great help for the community's health as well. And it's like a one-stop shop. So if they need anything at the same time, at the same specific moment, as a small satellite pharmacy, we would be able to provide that. Um, that's just a brief note what we, uh, what I have kind of designed. Uh, the more understanding will come with your questionnaire. So 
and we could sponsor the same events as well but even there was there's certain events we could help and promote health so for opening a satellite pharmacy is just more promoting health of the community and that's the most a top agenda what we heard from the community and that's the reason we presented this in front of the council today and they our community told us to do this and that's the reason we proposed the initial letter and it was your opportunity it was a great um You've been really kind and generous to give us an opportunity to discuss about this today. I would take questions and answers and to understand more because I don't want to go to the technical team, uh, technical term in, in related to pharmacy because I may go overboard and with that. Okay, well, again, I want to say Niao and thank you for joining us this evening and walking us through your presentation uh, slash proposal. Uh, at this point in time, I'll open the floor up for any further questions or comments from Council. I'll first begin with Kiri, over to Melba, and then Greg. Kiri, you have the floor. Yeah, have you talked to the other pharmacy that's down here on the reserve for their input? So we, we tried to speak to them, but we didn't get any specific response. But I did hear from the community as well that they, they are more overburdened and they are not be able to share the same services what we could share. And uh, the community, the, some of the community members say, did suggest that they're not really happy because they, are, they have, they're overburdened with a lot of um, stuff on a daily basis and they're not be able to provide specialty services what we provide. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks for your response uh, to that question. Over to you, Melba. My, my apologies. Oh, there you Sorry. Go. There you go, Melba. Uh, okay. Sorry, I didn't have my mic on. I'm wondering about the additional responsibilities that pharmacists have to provide service to, to community members. How are you going to do that? And what are they that you would uh, certainly uh, help our, our people here at Six Nations? So we would be focusing more on the pharmacy services like... Um, the flu shots coming right now in, in uh, middle of October. So we could help up in their flu shots. The newer vaccines are coming up for the RSV, for the, for the um, respiratory um, diseases. So we could provide that. COVID shots are still the booster shots. The newer booster shots are coming in. So we could do that as well. Now we do the COVID, not the regular COVID test, but we even do the special RT-PCR test, which goes into the lab. We do that as well. Now, with, when it comes up to diabetes, um, if any diabetic, we don't do the random test, but we even do the A1C. Now, A1C is an average blood sugar level in the last three months. So we provide that specific test. So if the doctor from the Six Nations community tells us to do a specific test for this patient and give them education, we'll be able to do that. So this is much more of a consulting pharmacy than, than just a regular pharmacy. Now the pharmacy which we have in the center is just a regular pharmacy which they provide medications. What we're focusing on is more on the clinical basis, like not we only giving out medications, but we only we're talking about their health needs like diabetes education, blood pressure education, provide a blister pack so they can take their medications on a regular basis, um, do all type of shots, not only restricted to the flu and the COVID shots, but if, a, if, a, if an elderly community, come, uh, a lady comes to us, right, and provides a bone medication, which she takes it every six months, we will be able to inject that specific vaccine to her as well and specifically for hepatitis shots as well. So that will incur less time for them to get that shot by the doctor or going to another doctor to have an appointment. So this will, these are the services which we will provide as a pharmacy, it's more clinical basis. Okay, thank you uh, for that. The next uh, person I have in uh, queue is Greg. Yeah, uh, hi, Mr. Shaw. Thank you for uh, taking the interest, actually, in seeing the need. Um, yeah, to Carrie's point, I do, I do think it's important that you do work with the existing pharmacy that's here um, and coordinate what services are, are, are best for, for both. 
um, one of the things that's, um, as you know, um, and it's a, it's a real troublesome problem we have on the reserve is, is uh, getting up-to-date medications, getting up-to-date medications that are, um, that are usually outside the non-insured health benefits. They're sometimes not covered under federal or OHIP. Now, um, will you be providing uh, up-to-date medications to, uh, to our First Nation members and, and giving that? Because the thing is, is we don't want to, we don't want to get second rate uh, medication to our, to our patients. Yes. And um, the last, another one other question, so uh, was data. Um, we'd like to see also uh, data on the type of patients and type of medications that are required. So that when we go to um, health representatives in the province or in the federal government, we'll have data that will uh, support what we need and that we can actually uh, look towards more funding for that. So coming to your questions, a really interesting question. So what we will be doing that we will be providing all the health community needs. So when it comes up to up-to-date medications, we'll be sitting down with the patient at the same time and go through each and every medications. So suppose if they are going to an hospital, if they're gonna to go to an hospital for an operation, then we will be providing the list to the patient, right? An up-to-date medication list to the patient. So when they go pre uh, to pre-admission pre to an hospital, they, they could just show that paperwork. So all the data will get updated. So we'll be doing that on a regular basis and even on a need basis as well when the patient needs it. When it comes up to data, yes, we would be providing all the data which is needed, but we have to just be careful regarding to patients' privacy as well. So anything statistical data, yes, we will be providing. Apart from the patient's name, date of birth, those comes up to Personal um, Information Act. It gets a bit tougher to provide that, but any thing related to data regarding that how many consultations we've done, how many diabetic consultations we've done, how many flu shots we've given, all those statistical data we would be provide, we'll be happy to provide whatsoever. And honestly, we want to work collaboratively with the, with the council, with the Six Nations community to provide healthcare needs for the patients and the community. Hey, thank you uh, for your responses. Again, I have a number of hands being raised. Uh, first, uh, going over to Hazel, recognizing Audrey and then Helen. Hazel, you have the floor. Yes, I wanna thank you for uh, bringing your uh, offer to council. Um, I think there's very many matters that we need to consider before this ever occurs. First and foremost, PharmaSafe, you will have to consult and uh, work things out with them because they've been serving this community for quite a few years now. I know that they have, um, there's a lot of people that use that pharmacy for their medications. Um, you mentioned space at White Pines, but there again, that's another matter where there's hardly any enough space for all the employees at Six Nations Council already. So other than the fact of them adding on, I don't know where that space would be, that 300 square feet, you said? The minimum, yes, the minimum is around about 250 to 300. That could be even at uh, the Six Nations healthcare community where the doctors are around as well. So we yeah. could work around with the doctors and the patients. Sorry, could go ahead. And just one more thing. I think um, consideration needs to be given to the fact that right now, I understand they're in the process of hiring a director of health. Until that director comes on board and amalgamates the areas that need to be together and work, it ne there needs to be one source of authority as opposed to one group here, one group there. And I think that needs time to be done prior to any changes. But I agree, your your offer is great. Uh, another COVID round is coming up, and of course, everybody's going to need needles. We have our own public health department that does that, um, and there is a lot of natives who go off reserve as well. Yes. So um, I think there's a lot more consultation needs to be done before this becomes a reality. Thank you. No, we do appreciate that. And the mo another thing as well, that we could set up clinics at where the reserve and where the demand is. So if you want to have, if you want us to have a COVID 
shot clinic or maybe a flu shot clinic at a specific destination, right? According to the healthcare needs, we would be able to provide that as well at the same time. And coming up to patients, right? The delivery is gonna be free for each and every patient. So this is much more of a healthcare need compared to anything. And we wanted to work together with the doctors, with the, like uh, we've been to the building many times. We spoke to the doctors as well. And what we could see that there's everything is there except a clinical pharmacy. Now coming up to working with the other pharmacy, the PharmaSafe, we do realize that a lot of patients come in there, but the, they've been extensively busy that they could provide any other services, right? We would we could approach them and see if how we could work collaboratively with each other. But usually, pharmacies are usually independent pharmacies, so they do not like to work with another pharmacist. They're not like the doctors because it's like a different it's like a different store working together, right? So it's really really tough. We have tried that in in, in the past as well but it gets really, really tough if the person wants to, like, as a, as, a, as a patient, if I like my pharmacist, I'm not going nowhere. So it's not about stealing business, but this is more about caring for the patients. And it's like one-stop shop where each and every patient's needs can be satisfied. There's certain needs which uh, patients do not like it, then they stick to the old pharmacy or they go to a different pharmacy as well. We have uh, patients from the reserve coming from all different places. Right now, we this was proposed by our reserve patients. They said that, why didn't you guys do this? Because we need help over there. And that's the reason for the proposal as well. Okay, thank you. I have, excuse me, two more uh, speakers left. And then we're going to look to wrap uh, this presentation up. As uh, you've noted from the comments, there's still much uh, much more work to ha to happen uh, prior to getting to, uh, to a point of actually uh, making this uh, work. So I'll pass it over to Audrey at this point and then over to Helen. Welcome, Dr. Shaw. Um, I was interested in what you had to say, but I think that council has to do their due diligence. We have to find out the number of people that that uh, need service. So uh, is it possible for you to share your data with us to help us do our due diligence, like the community survey you took? That would be uh, a good thing to have. No names, no breach of confidentiality. And I think that... Um, if it's needed, then we have to talk about that. So it's not going to be an answer tonight. It's going to be when we decide and we've got our CEO here who uh, loves uh, <laughs> research. <laughs> so um, we, we can get that done. And as I, I, I agree with my, with my fellow colleagues, like space is um, optimum here. We, we need more space. Like right now, people are working from home. Yes where they should be in an office here that they had, but we've grown so uh, quickly in our uh, staff. So that's another problem that we have. But thank you for the presentation. I appreciate it. No, I really appreciate you giving us the time for um, at least presenting this. Uh, but yes, when it comes up to data and stuff, like even the healthcare professionals at the White Pines, the doctors, uh, the importance of pharmacy, pharmacists, even in the hospitals, long-term cares have taken a huge role. And this is the newer role of a pharmacist coming in, doing the shots, doing the minor elements. Now, suppose if a patient cannot see a doctor and somebody's having a bladder infection, then a pharmacist, they could even give us a call virtually. We could give them a call. We could go through the questions and we could provide that specific medication as well without seeing the doctor as well. So anything related to acne, diaper rashes, uh, bladder infection, all of those, um, the government has given us a proposal to give us all those specific uh, minor ailments. And there are about 21 minor ailments which a pharmacist can prescribe. They can prescribe all the medications without any permission with the doctor. So a clinical pharmacist will just add more um, healthcare prospective to the community. And that's all about the getting their health well-being to the table. Okay, thank you again for your uh, responses. I do have uh, Helen, uh, Councillor Helen in queue uh, next, and then I see uh, Councillor Sherilyn has her uh, hand raised online. So over to you, Helen. Yeah, I wanna thank you for your information. 
Um, I have a concern with the methadone clinic being a part of it. We have a methadone clinic here now that's a total disaster. So I really have a concern with that. Secondly, I'm curious as to, because our drugstore we have is a pharmacy, and yours is a pharmacy. I'm curious why they're letting a pharmacy come right next door to another pharmacy, because that doesn't usually happen. So a pharmacy is just a brand. It doesn't mean that we have to have a pharmacy. We could have any other brand. Pharmacy is just like the name of a brand, but we could change a different brand to a different, uh, like a pharma choice, or we can have an IDEO or Guardian. That's not a problem at all. Uh, changing up the brand is not a problem at all. Um, regarding coming to your methadone question, now the methadone, we are specialized, we are specialized in that, but now if we feel that methadone is as a different demand, right? then we could just practice where the doctor is and we, we could give them methadone at that specific moments. Now, it's all about managing the workflow. We have worked with methadone patients. We, my my pre previous pharmacy, we had, uh, we, we, we had a clinic of methadone and we used to serve like 200 to 300 patients on a daily basis, right? So we have the opening hours in such a way that it doesn't disrupt the regular hours at all. That's what we used to do as well. So we open our clinic between eight to 10. So between eight to 10, all the patients come in, they get their stuff and they go away. Now it's all about managing the workflow. Um, that's a total different thing. This, the specialties are, we have a lot of specialties, but we could even do that specific service as well at the same time. Well, it's and, just that we had a person wanting to do a methadone clinic in the plaza over there next to the health building. Okay. Before that, we turned them down. So I have a concern with that methadone clinic. Second, no, um, I'm like the rest of the people. I really think you need to have some kind of discussion with uh, Susan McNaughton, the one that owns the pharmacy next door. We will try having a discussion with them and see if they would able to collaborate with each other. But as I said, they're pharmacy. There's a two, 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 if we are a pharmacy and they're the pharmacy, it's like they would not like any other pharmacy to come in and help. And according to what we've done, what have we researched and what our patients have told us even on the reserve that they are overburdened with stuff and they're not able to provide any other services. I don't know about, about overburdened because I don't discuss your business, but I go there on a regular basis and I'm doing well getting my medicine and filling my prescriptions. I don't have no problem at all. So okay. myself, well, if it come right down to it, I would not support this if we get to that point. So I'm just letting you know that. Okay. okay thanks, uh, thanks, Helen, uh, for your comments. And I think that's the other, uh, I think, um, I guess, side uh, to this, this issue is, you know, one, I don't believe Pharmaceve or Susan has ex full exclusivity on the reserve. I think this is about, uh, not about business. I think you've, Mr. Shah, you've been saying that for multiple times. It's about actual, the demand itself and how we could better serve our entire community. I know there's many, many members who go off the territory to other pharmacies. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's we need to maybe less worry about the business side of it and more worry about how we're taking care of our patients. Over to you, Sherry Lynn. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, along, um, to mention along with my the other comments, uh, for sure this needs more work. Um, I guess what I would like to know is um, if you haven't talked to the pharmacy yet, but you're making statements that they're busy and can't do these, um, these things, I guess that concerns me is because you haven't talked to them. Um, so they don't offer these types of Thing. So I guess what I want to know is, are the concerns regarding um, not meeting with them, but having these blank statements that this is what you heard, you know, from other, <laughs> from other sources. And I like the rest of my colleagues, I think for sure, um, for anything is to have a chat with, at least with um, PharmaSave to know the facts, I guess, is what I'm asking. Thank you. Sure. We could, we could try doing that. We have tried that uh, reaching out there, but it was really hard to get 
in touch that what are the services, what we could provide and what they could provide. They are more of a dispensing pharmacy and we are a clinical pharmacy. So a dispensing pharmacy is dispensing medications and a clinical pharmacy is more working collaboratively with the physicians to provide the healthcare needs of the patients. So it's like a hospital pharmacy where a hospital pharmacy, at, they work in the hospital and they work collaboratively with the doctor. And then a dispensing pharmacy is a different pharmacy location where they only give out medications as well. Um, there's no, not to be, to be brutal saying that they haven't provided it. What we heard, it's what are the patients told us and the patients of the reserve told us to approach you. And that's the reason we have approached you because we already have a dispensing pharmacy in Caledonia, which we have been working throughout the community and through, uh, and the not, and, and out, outskirts of the community as well. So this was just much more of an idea which we could help the patients and the reserve community as well to for their more of their health, health and well-being rather than anything else. But coming to that point that we would try to approach them and see how we could work together. We could try emailing them again. We have tried once, but we could try them again and see if we could get in touch with them and see how we could do together to work around. Okay, Mr. Shaw, well, we do again want to say now and thank you for joining us this evening uh, to provide us with your presentation. At this point in time, it's been noted just by virtue of the comments uh, that there's much due diligence that needs to occur and then we need to talk. I don't think, I don't know why we're putting so much emphasis on the pharmacy locally, but I think we need to put more emphasis on our local health teams and what we're doing within our own services here and how we could further provide the better services for our community members. So at the end of the day, as noted in my earlier comments, uh, it's going to be uh, at this time as a recommendation to accept your presentation as information. So with that being said, I'll look to a mover and seconder to accept the presentation as information at this time. Moved by Kiri, seconded by Greg. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried again. Thank you, Nyawa, Mr. Shaw. And again, uh, we'll, I'm, I'm sure we'll task our new CEO with any uh, further follow-up, uh, especially on our end internally uh, and where, where we go from this point. Sure, we appreciate it. We appreciate your time and giving us an opportunity so we could help the community as well for the health and well-being. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thanks. Okay, Council, we're going to continue moving along here. We do have, again, a number of other delegations. Uh, the next delegation is with us uh, in the chambers, uh, Mr. Chad General. Um, this is in relation to the CEPO or nomination process uh, discussion. As a community member, he wanted to be uh, put on the agenda to walk through his report. I understand he also had met uh, with our CEO, Nathan, on this as well as uh, again, uh, Chad, we have to be very careful on the the line that we walk when it comes to uh, CEPO as majority here are candidates and are in direct conflict of interest. Uh, so that being said, I'll pass the floor over to yourself. Okay, there we go. Okay, so my name is Chad General and I, I had some social media, you know, um, interactions in, on the community bulletin board regarding the election uh and nomination process notification of the community members and so i took it upon myself to carry out an independent review um just visiting the which i asked uh lori harris former cpo or whatever i had asked her for information that would help me uh conduct a review of of the duties and responsibilities of the chief electoral polling officer so once i <clears throat> i did visit personally uh the businesses that she outlined in in an email to me um stating all the businesses that were where the notifications were posted upon speaking with the owners managers employees they told me that there was no notification posted at these businesses a six of the 10 businesses that were noted in her email did not have notification posted and this was two days after the nomination process. And what I found was that even if with the two day lapse, they, those notices should stay posted because of the um, election information attached to it. And that's uh, just where I'm at with that. Um, I fully think that, uh, that with that review that the CPO 
did not carry out her duties uh, to inform the community of the nomination process. And I feel that the um, nomination under my recommendation in that report, I, I feel that the nomination of 2023 should be declared invalid and should be redone um, with more notification to the community through uh, better avenues. Like um, one of them was the um, CKRZ radio, which was noted on the um, on the email from Miss Harris, and it stated that the post was in the um, radio station. But I spoke with Amos Key, manager of the radio station, who said he had no no advertisement was paid or purchased from CKRZ for that. And I know a couple of other places that the notification was posted, but it was not posted in a conspicuous area, which I have provided pictures um, with uh, Nathan there. And I pr provided the report. I don't know if he's all got a copy of it, but I did ask it to be uh, put into your mailboxes. Um, but I do have the pictures for follow up, just to have that that none of the none of the stores that were listed had postings, and that was mine. I really, I guess my the end result is that I I would like to launch an appeal of the election process, and because there's nothing in the election code that specifically says nomination process because we want to try and get it done before the election we want to try and get the nominations voided that's that's where i want to i want to start my appeal from there and and i want to know what the the i guess the next steps are to do that well that that's again uh chad again thank you now for coming in front of our council and addressing your concerns uh, with the process however we as the council we can't comment on your mm -hmm. your, your next step that's where we're caught okay. in the middle of this because yeah. at the end of the day and we as you know in the 2019 election we had the same yep. type of an ap appeal not at the nomination well actually yeah it was partly it was. of the nomination yeah. process into the actual results yeah. so at the end of the day uh from my understanding is since the resignation of Lori harris this council had the duty and the 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 responsibility to appoint a new a CEPO. Mm -hmm. We can do that until we appointed our new CEO, who ultimately that that lies within the office of the CEO, mm -hmm. as, as opposed to the elected council. Okay. So once that was completed, we then said, okay, now we have the responsibility, again, given the time frame, to appoint a person to that role which is where now Dorothy Patterson comes into play, yeah. which is one of the new business items yeah. this evening to actually have it vetted through process yeah. of a BCR to then go on to Indigenous yeah. Services Canada, which is again, part of the whole process from elections okay. itself. So with that being said, you're now have to take that up with Dorothy Patterson, yes. the new CEPO. Yes. yes, and that's that's what I mean. Even, even the what you spoke of the article, the article about the controversy in the 2019 um, I believe Dorothy was involved in that as well. So I I know her name is brought up through that. She was Dorothy Russell Patterson. She, she was, was not. She, the, the CPO was Steve Williams at the time. No, I, I see it where that the, it was an article. I have the article and I can forward that to uh, Nathan. Okay, article yeah. as in like article a newspaper, as in a newspaper article? article. Okay, well, uh, again, not all the other flip side of that. Newspapers don't yeah. all the time give factual information. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, I, I, it's it's in its entirety. There's comments by Helen. There's comments by other councillors that were on council at the time. So I just wanted I just wanted that to come to you. Sure. There's information for the council, but I I will be dealing with Nathan okay. and and the new CP. And don't okay. Yeah, because yeah, I think again we have to again walk that fine line of yeah. of and and I just feel that I just feel that it's um it's because of the non notification of the community. A lot of pe people were not aware of it right and not um it wasn't brought to the attention of everybody in this even in the districts that the former districts i should say right um you know where there's no postings at all in the areas of you know, five and six so right. yeah so i will do i will continue on with my appeal and and uh i will appeal the even the like the dates the you know I want. I just want it to be redone because for the community. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And, and I. I. I, think, I mean. I think we all agree to the the fact of good governance. I mean, yeah. this all leads back to obviously there are gaps and and that need to be fixed. Yeah. And the election code, as in the gaps, is the election code is very vague. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's so, that part of the yeah. And and the other thing is that was there really sufficient time for the community to prepare for that under the like where it was at the AGM voted on and then we just pushed it through. So well, yeah. was there enough notification like for like uh, like for instance to do the ballots produce the again ballots that is within the responsibility yeah. and role of the CIPO. Yeah. So you know that has to I mean okay. regardless of which the, the the formal former CIPO resigned. Yeah. We are now we were left in a predicament to get that position yeah. filled because that's our only role. Yeah. To get it filled. Okay. Over to you, Helen. Yeah, I disagree that we can't say anything because he's not talking about so much about the process. He's, what he's saying is that the CEPO that we hired, and we did hire her, did not fulfill her duties. And I think we can we can talk about that and comment on that because we're the ones hired her. So if comment on it. Fulfill her duties, then we need to do something about it. And what are you proposing? I don't know, but I know we've gotten a lot of complaints because the nomination made nobody really knew about it. Again, and this is where we have to like for me, I I always it's a little bit frustrating for me because at the end of the day, we talk about for one, conflict of interest. I don't know, I don't even know if anyone knows yeah. what that means in this community. Not anymore, I think at the end of the day, we need to actually look to see what is that. Yeah. What does that term mean? Because at, this is all about good governance. We're about to elect people to make sure we can lead us to the address and to, yeah. to address our issues, yeah. Yeah. right? So I, everyone knows yeah. an election happens. Well, previously to this, the the first of the four year term, it happened every three years for the last since nineteen twenty four. Exactly. So okay. at the end of the day, I think yes, we have to be very cautious in terms of what we're saying because that could potentially put a candidate in conflict of this upcoming election. Which is another big issue. If that happens, someone from the community could easily say, well, why were they even commenting on that issue when they were a candidate making these types of, I guess, input into yeah. ultimately a decision that we don't know what the outcome is yet. Yeah. I, one, just one question is, uh, in this, was, was there an election code committee that was struck? Yes. Yeah. And, and can I get a list of those members? Sure. Yeah. I don't see why not. Uh, Helen? My thinking is, when we hire them, we are not candidates. Well, my thinking is when we hired the CEPO, we were not candidates. We hired her. And that's my, the, the only issue I'm saying is if somebody's saying that she, they think they, they believe the, the CEPO didn't fulfill her duties properly, we're the ones that hired her. So that makes us responsible because she did not do what she was supposed to do. And I don't see it as a conflict because when we hired her, we weren't candidates. But but I think that's the but other. Now we're being told that she didn't do her job properly. So I think council has to deal with that somehow because. Okay, but that's if, if we go hired. back to why we had the CEO in place, as you know, our former our, our other CEO took a leave, a yeah. year leave, which is still his role, and we'll deal with that at that eleven month mark. Yeah. We've now put in again a new CEO. Which is why we didn't hire when you, when Helen says we hired her. Mm -hmm. That's not the truth. Mm -hmm. The CEO hired her. That's where the contract is hold, held with the office of the CEO. We had to approve it, so that means we hired her. The office of the CEO. And maybe if I need clarification, because I don't know. Just to clarify, that, please let me know. Sure. I don't want to go back and forth on this because apparently, yeah, apparently Helen has a different, uh, you know. Picture. So just to clarify, the CEO did do the hiring. Council has that authority to delegate that responsibility, which they did to the CEO. And the CEO did enter that contract with the with the CEPO. And then council, because we don't do our own membership here, council is required to give a VCR naming who they who the appointment of the C CEPO is so that Indigenous Services Canada will be allowed to work with that CEPO to get okay, the voters list. To get the so list. That's, yeah. that's why council has to do a BCR. It's not because council is hiring them, it's because it's a requirement for Indigenous Services Canada to get the voters list. Okay. And to my, to, from just my thinking, if that is the case of now we're seeing members upset with the process that the former CEPO took, mm -hmm. well, at the same time, she also resigned. Exactly. And so I don't know what more. I mean, we'll have to maybe consult legal on that. But further to that, 
she's submitted her resignation. Yes. So the most that we could have done, even as a CEO, if that was his realm, yes. was to terminate. Yes. But how could you terminate when someone already well, resigned? Well, from, from the um, texts that I received from Ms. Harris, I still have them on record that I, I, um, that she resigned because of the election code and besides many other reasons, but this is the main reason she gave me when I, when we spoke about after I had conducted the review and informed her that it was coming to council and that I was going to present it and I was going to meet with Nathan. So that's the reason she gave me was because of the election code. So yes, I don't did. know, I don't know what. And the reason that we were that. told was not that. Yeah. So there, like, there must be two yeah. other reasons. <laughs> there must be a few. I don't. I don't know. But she yeah. made her decision, and yeah. now we have to move forward. So, and, so and, we've and that's it. that's the one thing too is that we, that's what we should look at as well is if it's not in the code for her to carry out her duties properly, then that should be fixed before we should go for the nominations before we can carry on with a new election. Those things should be taken care of instead of carrying it through and opening it up. I to, I totally hear what you're saying. I totally hear that, but that's going to be up to the decision now of the new CEPO. Okay, so then I will I will follow through with Nathan, and I will keep on going with the appeal. I will submit my appeal tomorrow. It's all about transparency. So yes, yes. and that's why I brought it here instead of trying to put it out there in a the community before. That's respect for my community no, I, as well. I, totally, you and know, I respect you coming I, in front of us because yeah. I think it's it's about a, a fair process. Yes, that's that's what community wants, and that's all I ask, and and that's all I ask for the community is to be able to have the transparent government, being able to go to your leadership and being able to get answers. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah well. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, Council, just uh, for the record, if we can look to the recommendation for two again to accept as information uh, Chad's uh, presentation. Moved by Melba, seconder, second by Audrey. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, our next uh, delegation, uh, Kathleen Montour now has a number of guests as well, joining her with uh, part of the health planning presentation. Uh, so with that being said, I wanna welcome each of the ladies uh, to the chambers this evening, and we'll pass uh, the floor over to them once they get uh, all set up here. So good evening and welcome ladies. To those online, just bear with us as we're getting our next presentation set up. Okay, so just uh, for you just have to hit the button when it's red, you're you're ready to roll. So over to you. Good evening and welcome. Uh, so hello everyone. I just want to start by saying uh, thank you for having us here today. Uh, my name is Kathleen Montour. I'm the health planning supervisor. I am Mohawk Wolf Clan from Six Nations of the Grand River. So I just would like to give the space for other members of health planning to introduce themselves. Scano Seguago, Maggie Gallant, Nikaso. Hello everyone. My name is Maggie Gallant. I am Cayuga Bear Clan and I am the health planning administrative coordinator. Hi, my name is Samaya Smith, and I'm Mohawk Turtle Clan from here, and I am the health planning analyst. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jessica Bomberry. I am Onondaga Snipe Clan, and I am the economic analyst for health planning. Uh, just to confirm, are you able to see the PowerPoint presentation? Okay, great. So we have developed a brief presentation that we hope will provide a mutual understanding of the meaning of health transformation and what this work means for our community itself. So these values are a representation of us as members of health planning and are what motivates us in the work that we do. So all members of the health planning team are Six Nations of the Grand River community members and have lived experience both on reserve and with, within surrounding areas of the reserve. All members of the health planning team have local knowledge through involvement historically in initiatives and or other departments on Six Nations, which grants us understanding of the diversity and interconnectivity of the process of Six Nations, which feeds into the recommendations of our work. 
We, we hold a sense of passion as the connection we share with community fills us to understand community needs as it directly impacts our lives, as well as our loved ones, such as family and friends. We also hold a level of expertise as each member has a strong background in a wide range of areas relating to health, research, economics, and administration. We center our work around community as we recognize our responsibility as advocates for the health of the community and the importance to accurately and equitably represent the community needs, wants without bias or judgment. We strive towards a unified and strong nation with the preservation of our historical entitlements and having all community members having a strong foundation of who we are as a people. These values surround our core value of a good mind, which is our ongoing commitment towards having an unself unselfish mentality and using our rational abilities to establish peace through education, public opinion, and political unity, thereby aligning our thoughts and emotions with the flow of the universe. So how, how planning has developed our own definition of what health transformation means to us on the basis of our experience and what we have heard from staff and community. This process, process has been organic and has the flexibility to change based on the aspirations of the community. To us, health transformation means being community centered by prioritizing community voice as the foundation and quality improvement efforts and holistic healthcare system design. It also means increasing capacity and skill development by enhancing our healthcare capacity for tailored cutting edge community care for today's generation and the coming phases. And as well, it also means harnessing community vision through advancing our community while safeguarding our sovereignty and treaty rights. Um, so this infographic is a high level summary of our process. I would like to highlight that our process is fluid and may involve circling back if there are any aspects that need to be readdressed, which is represented by this bi-directional gray arrow. So our process begins first and foremost with staff and community engagement as the foundation of our recommendations. Um, we strive to have community voice and those most familiar with frontline care as the foundation of our recommendations. We then analyze these responses as a team to identify themes to guide our work. In order to ensure that our recommendations are applicable to the current realities of our community, we familiarize ourselves with the external and internal systems and processes that would have an impact on our recommendations. From here, we reference research on best methods that address our project themes by looking to evidence-based research and community-based research by conducting literature reviews and environmental scans. We also familiarize ourselves with work that has already been done within the organization by reviewing internal Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council documents, as well as consulting with already existing working groups related to project themes. After this, we move on to identifying next steps as a community informed by all the previous steps. Here we assess whether we need to circle back in the process before moving forward. If we decide that we do have a clear and equitable direction, we advance to mobilizing next steps as recommendations to relevant partners through advocacy work. Once all relevant partners are involved and express support for the recommendations, implementing these recommendations can occur to solidify action on project themes. One of the most important processes of health planning is that this work is continuous and we will reevaluate the success or weaknesses of the implemented action. If changes do need to be made, this process can cycle through again as deemed necessary. So health planning has three main projects in our work plan, which are culture as foundation, a community driven governance structure, as well as building health physical spaces. These priorities came from the Holistic Lifelong Care Report, which was conducted in fall of 2022. This report includes health planning's community and staff engagements prior to fall of 2022, as well as all of Six Nations Health Services, community, client, and staff engagements. Please keep in mind health planning also continuously monitors community feedback to update our priorities. Culturist Foundation is currently being addressed by the Cultural Inquiry Project, which is an internal document that compiles extensive community insights on the culture of our Confederacy from pre-colonial times to modern day. 
This project will integrate Ongohawe community knowledge to establish departmental cultural standards and Ongohawe care models that are informed by our ancestral values, but still applicable to our community context today. The cultural inquiry project is currently in the planning stage, compiling all cultural research previously conducted on Six Nations to inform questions to community, as well as drafting an Ongohawe based research methodology. Our second priority is exploring a community-driven health governance structure. This priority was informed by community feedback and staff engagement data. We are looking to address this priority by evaluating our current health governance framework and assessing the strengths, weaknesses, and barriers of this system. We would like to implement solutions and recommendations that emphasize community engagement in the decision-making process while simultaneously enhancing the efficiency of frontline care. Our third priority is building health physical spaces. We are aware that work on community infrastructure planning is already occurring and is an ongoing process. This pr priority surfaces, surfaced as one of the top three themes from all of our health engagements, which is why we included this as one of our three priorities. Uh, we have broadened this term for infrastructure to be health physical spaces to allow exploration of community landscaping and innovative building techniques that promote healthy living and wellness for our community. However, we have decided to dedicate time to help inform this work next, next physical as we are placing our focus on the other two priorities. In the meantime, we would like to request involvement in the infrastructure planning committee and any other initi initiatives that connect infrastructure and health. Shown on the screen here is a word collage that displays priorities we have identified thus far. They have come about from our findings and represent the needs and wants of the community. The larger the font depicts the greater frequency they have been identified by community within our engagements. Our top three priorities the community has identified from our engagements are as follows. Culture, mental health, followed by substance abuse. As the work of health planning progresses, we continuously engage and monitor priorities to substantiate the needs and wants of the community. So why does this work matter? The work of health planning prioritizes community vision as the foundation of decision-making processes, which fosters community-centered service excellence through the utilization of community feedback. Health planning defines distinct methodologies that drive improvements where needed to promote positive change and expansion of the Six Nations healthcare system. Through our processes and deliverables, health planning creates the ability to be a resource for leadership by providing information, data, and evidence informed recommendations that is based on community voice. So keeping in mind the council restructure, we believe our team is an important tool and resource for the work of each portfolio. We believe health planning aligns with nation building because we believe in fortifying our community by upholding our ancestral values and asserting our nationhood. Some examples of how our work aligns include developing Ongohoi methodologies and tools to inform community driven standards. Currently, this point is being addressed by the Cultural Inquiry Project, which is a large-scale project that will have multiple outcomes that create best practices for our organization to support community and mobilize Ongohawi specific processes and knowledge. We are also in the process of creating tailored care models for our community's unique needs that are interconnected and directly applicable. This point, again, is being covered by the Cultural Inquiry Project which will involve learning about the Ongohoe perspective of health and document how we traditionally cared for our people by each health condition. However, this project will ensure these models are applicable to our current community context as the environment we live in today is vastly different than our previous generations. We're also exploring an integrated healthcare model to reflect our holistic understanding of wellness in our healthcare system. And the most important example, is that we ensure the preservation of our entitlements whilst building our capacity as a community. We understand that our ancestors were thinking about us when they were making important decisions and that we must also do the same for our future generations. This means that we must preserve what protections we have as a community when we are exploring ways of improving. 
We do this by including cultural and entitlement considerations in our risk analyses with upcoming opportunities considering health. So now we're going to discuss how health planning can align with service excellence. And uh, we envision aligning with service excellence by leveraging the community's vision to inform service provision. An integral part of this approach involves building a comprehensive database of community. I love you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we would have been done. <laughs> no. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't explained. <laughs> so with a comprehensive database, an integral part of our this approach involves a comprehensive database of community knowledge and opinions on wellness, health service priorities, gaps, and strengths. Through this database, overarching themes are identified, providing strategic guidance for the organization engagement and analysis tactics, including the uh, identification of codes and themes from community responses, play a crucial role in our process. We also, as health planning, aim to provide evidence-informed and community-based priority recommendations to various priority projects, such as the Ministry of Health and Regional Health Priority Project. These recommendations are derived from the expressed needs and desires of the Six Nations community. Additionally, health planning keeps a, a, a close eye on municipal, provincial, and federal legis legislative updates, potential threats, and emerging opportunities. This includes the potential impacts of the Canadian distinction-based Indigenous health legislation, as well as Ontario First Works, <laughs> First Nations, Inuit Métis, Urban Indigenous Health uh, Framework, if they were to be implemented, if they were to be implemented, <laughs> implemented. <laughs> Collaboration is a key component of health planning. So we uh, actively build internal and external partnerships such as with the Lifelong Learning Task Force and Cultural Safety Committee. Health planning initiatives also aid in strategic departmental planning, such as um, the health plan that is required by the health services um, for, before municipal agreements. And we explore models such as community-specific healthcare quality improvement exemplified by projects like the Culture Inquiry Project. This project ensures that community interpretation of culture is integral to the service provision and enhancing the quality of healthcare for our community. To carry out the work of health planning effectively and efficiently, further support is needed from Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council. Health planning needs a shared understanding of our work and a stronger partnership with elected council to be able to support one another to work a shared vision of ideal health for our community. Both parties should have an open mind to change and explore new innovative changes that bring positive impact to community. In addition, the work of health planning requires political advocacy as pressure from funders to align with their definition of health transformation is a major concern. Health planning requires elected council support to inform Canada's federal government that true health transformation and relationship building with Six Nations requires Canada's federal government to understand, embrace, and work around how Six Nations as a community envisions the work of health transformation and not how they see it. Thereby, the health planning team will provide quarterly updates on the work of work to elected council and request that elected council provides political advocacy and support um, of the work of health planning team to engage with community to better understand what community wants in terms of the future of our healthcare services at Six Nations. 
so thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope the presentation was informative and has provided you with an understanding of the work of health planning and what health transformation means to us. So we would just like to open it up for uh, open discussion. Okay, well, again, uh, I wanna say Nyawa and thank you to each of you for joining us uh, this evening at General Council. I know uh, health transformation has been uh, a big conversation here at the table for a long time. Um, and I know, again, with the work uh, that each of you have been doing, uh, and it was really nice to see in terms of where exactly you needed the support, because we obviously we know we need to have that political advocacy. That's one of the main um, you know, pieces that where we can help, I, I guess, offset, in a sense, that definition of what Canada seems to be putting transformation as, and as well as Ontario and what that looks like in terms of bridging. Um, and so I think one of the key pieces and takeaway to this, obviously, we know we have an upcoming election and a, a transition period happening. One of those pieces that we have been working diligently on through the chief's office is to make sure that there's orientation, good packages of up-to-date information across the board in terms of the restructure uh, and as well as where uh, you know council needs to know on political advocacy areas especially especially health being it uh, is the biggest department biggest file so many things happening legislatively uh, and so that will be i think a good a good presentation to be included within that orientation package so one of the requests that i will have uh, to use is to work with jill uh, in Tammy from the Chief's Office, just to make sure that that's a part of for the new orientation uh, of the new council to come through. Uh, and so that, again, can I know that obviously going to be one of their priorities uh, moving into the new council of, uh, you know, health transformation in the bigger picture. So just want to say now to each of you again for presenting uh, to us this evening. Again, it's a very important discussion. There's a lot of work that needs to happen, as you <laughs> can attest to. Uh, and a lot of relationship building, I think, is another key uh, one, especially when it comes to the provincial partners as well as uh, obviously federal. Uh, so again, uh, just want to say thank you. Now, at this point in time, we'll open the floor up for any further questions or comments. I'll first uh, begin with Greg. Yeah, uh, Nyawa, Nyawa for your whole team for coming in and giving that presentation. Um, yeah, I like the I like the way the vision is is it's going forward in terms of a cultural based healthcare system. Um, you may be aware of the NUCA system in Alaska. Alaska, you're, you're aware of that. Um, and that system is uh, culturally based, consumer driven. It's driven driven from the uh, from patients. Um, the difference is is uh, to the chief's point. Oh, also to the fact that yeah, we 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 do not uh, agree with uh, the federal government's health transformation legislation. I think it's gone through first reading. We don't we do not agree with that. They did not consult with us. And I find that uh, that again, the typical uh, federal legislation being pushed through, and then uh, consulting after. Um, but like I was thinking before, is that in in Alaska they do have um, large gas oil utility reserve uh, funding, and that's something that uh, that's often required when we have to go in in our direction, and um, and I think that um, that's that's our responsibility. To do that, my my question is is that um, just in terms of time frame, like how can you how long will it take you to get into the specifics of of what is needed here at Six Nations? What what we need? What are our priorities that 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 need immediate treatment now and for the future? Is, do you have a, a certain timeline on on how you can assess that? I would say our priorities are continuously changing. So I feel like it changes based on the environment. And let's just say like COVID, obviously everyone is mental health and substance abuse is like at the top of their minds. Um, so like the priority is, yeah, like we're um, negotiate priorities um, with different levels of government. So right now we just base it off of at that moment I was in negotiation, but unfortunately, but yeah, so I think they're going to continuously change, and that's just based on the perception of the population. But um, yeah, so um, based, obviously, we'd want everyone's feedback, which would be pretty hard to obtain, but um, to get the most efficient results. But the more the merrier. So anyone watching, you see us engaged now. <laughs> 
Okay, I believe I had Audrey uh, in queue next. Uh, uh, two things. I'd like to hear Samaya's opinion on that. And um, I'm sure you can get it down to where it is you're going. And it doesn't change that much. You have to narrow it down and get your priorities. So that's what we're asking for. And the other thing I would like to propose is that not quarter more often than that, either every month, every two months, because when you come to a, into a council, a new council, people will bring in different ideas with them, something you may not have thought of or considered or a different spin on it. So you have to have that time to discuss it and then try to implement it in some way so that it works for the reserve and now all our members. So that's what I'm requesting. Smile. Putting me on the spot. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I actually think we do have priorities now, I would say, because um, we've already connect, collected about 152 different uh, community responses from our community engagements over the last year. And from there, we're using pivot tables, which is a kind of um, qualitative data analysis through Excel. And from there, we've already identified like quite obvious uh, priorities, which was culture, mental health, and substance abuse and addiction. So those are already three that we know skyrocket against all the other data responses as well. So um, I would say um, we should be focusing on mental health and substance abuse and addiction currently, because that's what's reflected in the community responses. Um, but also culture is like more uh, common even above um, mental health and substance abuse, but we kind of all know that culture is involved in everything that we do. So I think we should be addressing mental health and substance abuse and addiction from you know a cultural perspective. And you know, just more anecdotally, just from this is coming from me, I think like we uh, as a community and historically we've already you know uh, had such a healthy lifestyle uh, within our culture that you know, made it easier to have like a, a healthy mind. So to me, I would love to delve into, you know, that knowledge from our ancestors. Um, and then how do we, how do we heal our own community with our own ways? So yeah, I would say those are, we have those priorities right now. I don't actually see them changing. They're also, you know, we've looked at historical documents of our health services and they all say the same thing. Um, so, you know, we, we do continuously keep asking these questions, but, um, you know, so far they're still pointing to the same priorities over and over again, but, you know, they can evolve. But for now, I'd say we, we do have our priorities currently already. And if I could follow up with that, I couldn't agree with you more. Mental health on this reserve is rampant. And we have people going to committing some kind of a, a, a crime or a misdemeanor or whatever and they go to jail sleep off their whatever they were using that night alcohol drugs and they get out the next morning and we should have somebody there for them we should be providing wraparound service because they are a victim of their own addictions and i believe in the cultural ways as well and all of the values that it holds and we have to uh, try and reach people where they're at and try and move along with us with the cultural knowledge and understanding of who they are as Hoden Shoni. So yes, I strongly believe in that. And um, and the addiction is a uh, treatment center. We do need a, a treatment center here on the reserve. Not one there is the people, because you can't go to the one over here in Native Horizon if you're on any kind of substance. It kind of defeats the whole purpose. So there's a stop gap in there that we have to really think about. And that's the part that's probably going to get people moved to the next level of tr their treatment plan. Mm -hmm. And families have to be taught how to um, surround them with love and support because I think a lot of them don't feel supported. And we can do that with it as a community. So those are the types of things that it's working. I'd like to learn more about it. So mm -hmm. go ahead. Thanks. Good just to time. just to add, um, yeah, uh, we definitely are also doing a sub theme analysis currently within mental health and substance abuse and addiction, and you know, like you said, an addiction treatment center that also 
uh, you know, is works for our community, but also prioritize like emotional and spiritual, you know, stability as well is something that is also coming from these community responses. And I think we all know that as a community um, that we do need that. But um, I guess when it comes to advocacy work, you know, with, with the government, basically they do want evidence informed data, which is kind of, I think the strength of this team to provide that evidence. Like you can't refute that so that they will give us what our community needs. But yeah, I think that would just solidify why this team could be a resource for um, for everyone here and for the community. Most definitely. I think just really quickly, if I can add as well, um, to me, it's 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 breaking it down in, in a, almost like a multi-pronged approach because you can't just talk about mental health and then still have many of our members, you know, they still have the stigma around it. Because I think there's there's more than just saying, yes, we're in a mental health crisis. It's understanding to your point, what is that? What does that even mean? Because I think at the end of the day, people, our community, it's not, we're always, um, I think at times too prideful. Whereas we're, you know, if one is going through an issue personally, they're not going to talk about it because they're going to get made fun of them. They're going to get judged. They're going to get criticized. That's just how our community works, unfortunately. It's a sad state. But I think in order to do a more wholesome approach, it has to have more people involved, like this, like this team, like an orchestra like every social, everybody, it's almost like the high risk committee. We have the high risk committee of uh, at times, uh, you know, when there's unfortunately there's could be tra tragic events in this community where all parties, key stakeholders have to be at the table, including police. Like uh, I know Councillor Bomber, uh, Paulus Bomber mentioned, you know, the the amount of, of violence within our community currently, that all stems as part of mental health as well. And I think the other piece of it is the infrastructure piece, which I think was one of your requests uh, to be a part of the, the infrastructure task force, because we're not just now talking about priorities within these services. We're now talking about priorities of how, what is it in terms of building and what is that we need to see further up? Because for one, we know lifelines, wasted space, right? So we know that there's priorities within different buildings that also need to be looked at at the same time. So simultaneously, while you're doing this work, it's like almost like a multi-prong to say, here's the status of where we're at and here's where we need to go. And I was very pleased to see your response to the current state of what those priorities look like on the operational side. We now know that there's also going to be priorities on the infrastructure side and what that all comes into where the whole restructuring has ultimately been of well-being, a wholesome well-being. And that's kind of the shift that I can see as well. More people need to be involved for sure. Uh, Audrey? Just to follow up uh, with my last uh, question about suggesting uh, more frequent meetings with the council. Is that word yes? Or yeah. no, I, 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 think that, <laughs> I think that's important. I think that, to be honest, in going through the, the work of the restructure, that's been one of the gaps and challenges that we've noticed and seen is that lack of communication from departments and what's happening specifically within programming. I mean, we've always been kind of going back and forth on, oh, well, yeah, that's not, that's administration, we're governance. I know that's been the big topic around this table, but at the end of the day, yes, communication needs to be more of, and I think that's going to ultimately help serve better our people in entirety. Yeah. Hazel? Yeah, thanks ladies for your presentation. That sounds good to me because that word of transformation has been rolling around from the government for too long and they really have no clue what Six Nations needs here of our environment, of our community, et cetera. And, um, this is the first presentation I've heard where I feel comfortable in hearing that word transformation because now it'll be classified as Six Nations Transformation for Health Services. And I was gonna to suggest too, in all of those uh, topics that you mentioned, like the mental health, the uh, all of our community problems, we have a lot of them. But I think if you set up, um, support groups too. I think that would be really helpful where uh, groups who are suffering from one type of trauma or family can go and have a support group where they can discuss. And from, the, from those, you can pick up more information to incorporate into your, into your transformation. 
I would definitely say we totally agree and that like with our uh, negotiations internally with like the government that uh, that are our next steps to engage with more internal partners and even with uh direct responses like a lot of people like foresee it's interesting to see the community trends but like mental health housing and stuff like that are very common yeah yeah definitely and i think that's the other piece in terms of the legis legislative you know as as mentioned you know it was at first first reading um you know what happens in the discussion at at the bureaucratical level, which is part of your job, and then what happens when we're at the ministerial level, and which is our job of the political advocacy part. So it's really important to know what's happening down here in order to get to the top of the discussion over here. So and really important. Uh, Melvin? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. <clears throat> it's not often that we have four beautiful ladies in front of us. We Thanks for the chairs. <laughs> sometimes we have two, but not four. So only <laughs> only two. So I uh, certainly um, um, agree with your presentation. It was holistic. And I really like the part of the culture that you recognize what our ancestors were all about and you're bringing that forward. So I am looking forward to your addition to your staff when it comes to medicines and culture, because I'm sure that needs to be in place. And certainly you recognize um, what our community is all about and how we're suffering in many ways. So, and Audrey mentioned, you know, the, the area of uh, mental health. And, you know, I always say that, you know, every time police go out, it's a mental health issue every time. Yeah, so it's really needed to look at it again and plan. So. You have some good planning here and you're young to carry it into the future and add the elders and whatever else you need to do. Yeah, so the future looks bright mm. with people like you in the community and planning and partnership. The community, as you are mentioning here, is the most important. What do they want? What do they see? How do they want it done? All those things. So I certainly appreciate your presentation tonight. Well, thank you, Nyawa, so much uh, for your comments. And I think Melva's always, always leaving us on that, that positive note, which is we have to make sure that there's still hope. We have to keep continuing to push forward as best as we can as a community. Um, so again, it's with, with all of you and, and the staff and so forth that are going to just do exactly that. So Nyawa, again, for that. Audrey? Yeah, it's just another recommendation I'd like to, to uh, suggest. And that is, I noticed there's an awful lot of uh, programs running uh, mental health uh, programs. I would like to see that all amalgamated. Everyone should know what they're doing. When you come to a client or a family, you should be able to give them wraparound services and not have to go here. If you're in an episode, you may not be thinking of the right place to go to. Or you may not know where to go. So then may, you may get yourself in more and more trouble each time. I'd like to recommend the same with health. Everybody in health should be on the same page. We should be knowing who's in health, what position, what they do, and you want to know what? The community needs to know that. They need to know all of that. So the more we can um, inform our community and the more we can engage with our community, the better, because they're going to tell us what they want and what they need and where the gaps are. And I wish you very well and look forward to working with you closely. Yeah, well. Okay, thank you now for that. Uh, Audrey, over to you, Hazel. Just one request, Samaya, can you sing for us? <laughs> <laughs> for real? <laughs> yeah. We have a request. <laughs> Maybe what we can do is we'll we'll wrap it up and we'll ask you to to leave us on a high note here if we can literally. Oh, Mariah Carey note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Sure. If anyone has any questions, like of our team at all, or if anyone wants to say anything first, I don't know. Are we the last present? Yes, you are. Are we? Okay. <laughs> uh, I just want to thank everyone for. Um, listening to our presentation again and providing the feedback that you have given us. Um, just to mention, you all are community members yourselves, so we do value what you have to say, um, and we will be taking that into consideration, and hopefully we can move forward with the, some of the next steps that you have proposed for us today.
Amazing. And just just really quickly, if I can add as well, if uh, just to the earlier request uh, to work with Tammy and Jill to be included in the orientation package of the most recent and up to date. I know we're working uh, diligently on making sure the transition is as seamless uh, as possible. And then that, uh, again, it's for the ultimate benefit of overall collective. So with that being said, uh, I'll just really quickly ask uh, for a uh, the recommendation of mover and seconder to accept as information at this time. Moved by Audrey, seconded by Hazel. All in favor? Any opposed? Yeah, that's that's what the resolution states at the end. If you read the therefore be resolved. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing a motion is carried. Well, thank you so much, ladies. And maybe we can ask for a little treat from Samaya if we can. <laughs> Oh, I don't so know what songs to sing. <laughs> I was like, what are we wearing? <laughs> Melba? Um, sure. So again, there's the whereas is the Six Nations. Uh, the health planning team will provide quarterly updates with their work to the Six Nations Grand Elected Council. That's also been noted that it may be more communication as well. Uh, whereas the Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council will seek to gain a mutual understanding with the health planning team of the meeting of health transformation, not simply for how Canada's federal government defines it, but what this work means for community itself. And again, therefore, be it resolved uh, that the, that the health, teaming, uh, health planning team engage with community to better understand what community wants in terms of the future of health care services at Six Nations. And again, at this information at this time. Is there any further questions, comments to the motion? So again, you guys will be coming back to uh, the table on a more frequent uh, basis as opposed to the actual resolution of the quarterly. Okay, that being said, we've got, it's been moved and seconded. <laughs> Maybe a little treat before we go to our next item from Samaya. <laughs> no pressure, this was oh a request. <laughs> Um, I don't know. What do you want to hear? Like, I have one of my songs, or I can sing an Escanye, whichever. Escanye would be perfect. Escanye, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no problem. <problem. laughs> um, yo, he, yo, honey, No, how we know where he, oh, no, how we know, God, no, we are, hey, So much, so much. <laughs> I know you weren't expecting that. But that's just... <laughs> no. <laughs> well, thank you again, ladies, for joining us this evening. And again, to the uh, keep up the great work in the council. Looks forward to working again closely with each of you. Now, all right. Now for the chairs, Melba. Yeah. <laughs> okay, council and community, we're going to continue moving along on our agendas here for this evening's general council. Our next item on the agenda is the adoption of the council minutes of September 26th. I'll move on a minute, Chief. Okay, now uh, Kiri. Kiri's moving on the minutes. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Melba. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the minutes? Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing none. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, the next item is a recommendation from Social Services. I believe we have Arliss on the line for a quick uh, overview of this recommendation. Again, this is in relation to the completion of the band reps apartments on Herald Ro uh, Road. 
Uh, maybe Arliss, are you there? Can you hear us okay? Again, it's very straightforward, but just wanted to provide Arliss an opportunity for a high level overview. I see she went off of mute. Good evening, Arliss. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll keep my camera off because my with bandwidth might be a little bit low. But yeah, um, this is uh, required for the completion, the connection of hydro that requires the um, service agreement to be signed by the chief and six counselors. So the motion is to have that um, agreement signed is for the connection to the um, 12 unit apartment on Herald Road. Okay, thank you now for that our listen just really quickly again for to Melba's point earlier for community's sake, the recommendation does read where six nation social services are nearing the completion of the band representatives apartments located on the Herald Road. And whereas hydro one requires a basic connection customer service agreement for installation of a meter of 49 Herald Road and to be signed by chief and council and therefore be it resolved that the elected council approve the basic connection customer service contract and also be signed and executed by the chief and council for the installation of hydro one. Is there a mover and seconder to that effect? Moved by Hazel, seconded by Audrey. Further questions or comments in relation to the recommendation? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Audrey, seconded by Hazel to waive second reading on the previous motion. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, I think that's there's nothing further on your end, Arliss. No, that's all as long as you know, we can get it signed and, and um, we can pick it up tomorrow and take it back to. Um, yes, so if I can get counsel, we'll uh, we'll have that through DocuSign. If you can keep an eye on your emails to get as I think we need a, a total of six uh, counselors yes. for the agreement itself. So, yes, Arliss, and just really quickly, uh, uh, Kiri has a question. Yeah, Arliss, did, did we get the signature from the chief for the um, social services uh, addition? As as far as I know, we did not. So there's another document, um, Chief, that needs your signature. Yeah, yeah there's there's two. So this this is yes. 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 We'll we'll get that completed ASAP. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. No worries. Okay, Council. I believe that is it in terms. So our next uh, the Six Nations Anti Bullying Task Force has been deferred uh, to another meeting. So they will be presenting again on their uh, their findings. Uh, but that does. Actually, no, one business item, two business items. Melba, over to you on new business. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, I do apologize. Helen has a report under counselor reports. Do apologize, Helen. I'll pass it over to you, then I'll come back yeah, over to you, Melba. Well, I, I just wanted to say, too, with the um, council drive-by of the gift bags uh, last week, I wasn't there handing out the gift bags, but I did go in the morning and help people pack the gift bags. So. I did my part. Um, I also had a meeting with the uh, Chief Committee on Housing and Infrastructure today. And uh, we're coming down to the nitty gritty where Six Nations is going to have to decide what we're going to do, whether we're going to develop our own housing authority or whether we're going to go in with um, someone else. So they're really looking at, if you remember, in my reports, I wrote about the three options that were presented and they were approved by the Chiefs of Ontario. Right now they're costing how much those options are gonna cost, but uh, we really need to get a move on whether we're gonna do our own housing authority. And we need to start looking at that and discussing that and figure out how we can do that. And there's even the possibility that we could partner with smaller communities like maybe Oneida and the, those little communities up that way to be part of our authority as well. So you, we could do that too. Um, or we could let someone else do it. We could just go into them, but we have to get, we have to get working on it. So we need to have a discussion. I think we need to set up some kind of a I don't know whether we want to do another task force because we have so many or we could even maybe look at hiring somebody to look into it, get all the info and everything and whatnot, because we all know, you know, housing's overstaffed. 
understaffed and busy and she, Lily doesn't really have time to do all of that, but we need to get moving on it. Okay. Because uh, the transfer of housing is coming soon. Okay, thanks, uh, Niawa, for that, Helen, for your report. And I know just going back on uh, that conference last that we attended, the Chiefs Ontario, um, I think we had a lengthy conversation here at the table that we were leaning towards our own authority and what that looked like. But I do like the idea in terms of if there's other smaller communities that could assist within the area or the region, because I know they're looking at the the uh, the, the re like sub regions to see how to further assist. But again, I do do agree with um, with agreeing or rather going along the route of our own authority. I think that's what this community needs. So do. Uh, uh, we'll make sure that that's also included in the orientation piece package as well uh, in terms of, again, that priority setting, what that looks like. So, Niawa, Helen, uh, back over to you, Melba, on new business. Yes. Um, we as council certainly have the obligation and responsibility to keep the community informed on the 59th general election. Now, it's my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, a uh, date change happened. It was supposed to be the deadline for councillors to get their all their information in on the 6th, and it was changed to the 10th. Tell me I'm wrong. And then now I'm hearing that from another councillor that online, online voting is no longer in place. And I think that uh, it was all advertised as such. The 6th would be the the deadline and online would take place. Tell me I'm wrong or tell the community what's happened. Okay, so I think just in terms of, because uh, there seems to be a lot of misinformation. So the last, obviously we know we've had now two CPOs, the, the first one resigned. Uh, the second one now is, uh, the second one is in relation to um, the BCR that I have in front of us as new business, which is Dorothy Patterson. The date in terms of that, to my understanding, was because there was two, there was holidays involved in that process. So the Friday and the Monday, which would have led it to the 10th. So that, that, hopefully clarifies that. The other pieces to it is I think Dorothy, uh, once again, appointed through this BCR, will come in front of the community to then share her next step, because a lot of the concerns that you're bringing forward are much along the same lines of our previous speaker, Mr. Uh, Chad. Yeah. And so what I would suggest at this point in time is to continue along the work with uh, our CEO and our new CEPO to then further and clarify anything further for community in terms of your your uh, concerns, Melba. Okay, and how is that going to go out to the community? Not only my concerns, but I'm concerned about the community. Of course. I'll, I'll pass it over to our CEO, Nathan, to address. So <clears throat> I did um, provide Dorothy with an avenue to use our, our communications. <clears throat> um, the one thing that's challenging is um, I, I, I'm doing so without putting our logo on it. So it's not kind of seen as a, a kind of a, a council kind of thing so that she still keeps her independence, but she does have, um, and, and I'm kind of towing a line here by providing her with the, our resources uh, for her to get information out to the community because we're behind the eight ball. Um, as it relates to the, um, the, uh, I understand the um, online voting. Again, we have to communicate that out, but she just didn't have time with uh, with the change in sepals. And uh, I know she's trying to call companies to get ballots made, but the issue is some companies need a number of weeks to get ballots um, kind of constructed. So uh, a lot of that work, legwork wasn't done uh, in terms of the, the pieces for those. So I did, I am giving her the, um, um, our comms department to get those communications out. Okay, thank you. Further questions, comments over to you, Helen. Yeah, I totally disagree with changing the date for the deadline. We were given a deadline date of October 6th at four o'clock. I don't think it's fair to all, any one of us candidates that rushed around getting our police check and getting, I was in a panic because I didn't get my police check till Thursday, rushing around, getting everything filled out, to hand it in by four o'clock and then turn around and change the date to Tuesday. 
I don't know what holiday was on Friday. I never had a holiday Friday, so I don't know what holiday was on Friday, but I, I, I you can't, they can't, you, you can't change the date once it's made. You can't do that. I, well, I guess she did, but you can't do that because it was already set and we all followed it. So to me, anybody that handed their application and after Friday sh should be disqualified. That's my thinking. And as far as the online thing goes, that was that has to get done as well because it's it's been out. It was in it's part of the election code. All of those voting ways is in the election code. We're supposed to follow the election code, and online voting is in there. Online voting, um, I don't know what else, off reserve, there's a whole about five or six things in there, I think. We have to do it. It's not even an option to say, I'm not going to do it. We have to do it. See, again, though, this is where it falls under the realm of the new CEPO. That's which is part of her duties and responsibilities. Yes, of course. So all these issues and concerns that we're bringing up at this table needs to go to the new CEPO. <laughs> well, I think at the end of the day, oh, sorry, Helen, your your mic's still on. Uh, so Mel, but to your issues, that's that's the process of the C with the CEO now going to the new CEPO. So those issues would be addressed at the CEPO level further say sure if a certain company cannot accommodate uh, online then you should go to another one and then another one exactly but surely there is a company that can accommodate our um election right. online but again I, I know that's been part of the struggle and it's not just the issue here within our elections but across the country in terms of these you know areas there's many territories that don't even have online voting at this point to my understanding, because of the lack of rather the not there's not as many companies out there to do it right. But the other the other flip side of it as well um, is we have a former CEPO running now as a candidate. You can't work with the same company that the former CEPO used to work with and then now be a candidate. It's another direct direct conflict of interest. So again, this is all needs to go to the CEPO's office. So with that being said, I do have the res which is my new business item, which is the resolution for uh, ISC in the appointment of the new electoral polling officer, which has already been. So this is just, again, by process. So I am looking for the, it reads, uh, whereas SNGREC delegated their authority to our CEO to recruit uh, a new CEPO, and whereas the uh, council on July 10th accepted the recommendation from the CEO and appointed uh, Lori Harris as the chief of the CEPO to oversee the election code vote and the 59th general election. And whereas on September 26, 2023, Lori Harris provided written notice to the CEO that she is resigning as CEPO effective immediately. And whereas the interim CEO recruited an experienced and qualified Six Nations band member and appointed them as CEPO effective October 5th, 2023. And whereas ISC requires a BCR from council to allow Indigenous Service Canada to, commun to communicate with CEPO to fulfill CEPO obligations, therefore be it resolved that the elected council accept the appointment of Dorothy Patterson as the CEPO officer for the Six Nations of the Grand River 59th general election effective October 5th, and that Indigenous Services Canada be notified of the change in the chief electoral polling officer at Six Nations of the Grand River. That's the current BCR that is needed for ISC purposes. Looking to, sure. Sorry, that she follow the current election code. It, geez, that's what it's. That, that's that's her whole job. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're having some difficulties here. Well, you had difficulties with your former CEPO. I don't know who's to say that we're going to have difficulties with the new CEPO. We don't know that. Hopefully, everything will be in place. I agree. Thank you. No problem. Is there looking for a mover and seconder? Again, this is by process. Moved by Melba, seconder. Seconded by Kiri. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Melba, seconder. 
Seconded by Kiri to waive second reading on the previous motion. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. That does complete our agenda for this evening's general council. And again, just want to say nyawa to all of our I'm sorry, but we don't have that within our agendas. Was this part of the agenda package or did you have a new business item further? I couldn't hear what you said. Sorry, can you confirm is, are you Mr. Martin? Okay, it's an estate issue. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so there, you will have to work with you off the line on that estate issue. Okay, yes, we'll, we'll touch base after the meeting's complete. Yes, sir, it's right just out the door. You're welcome. Um, okay, so that does complete, again, our agenda for this evening's general council. At this point in time, I'll look to a mover and seconder to adjourn. Moved by Audrey, seconder, second by Greg. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing that motion is carried. Thank you now to everybody who joined us this evening uh, and followed us. So please again, uh, take care and have a great evening.